I am Tony Todd and welcome to Throwing Heat. I'm here with my two co-hosts, Dr. Dan Ratner and Ross DeBoff. Today's guest is one of my favorite all-time players. Uh, he's a 15-time All-Star, 13-time Gold Glove winner, and a member of the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. Let's bring to the show my buddy, Mr. Ozzy Smith is in the house. What's up, Ozzy? All right, man, you sound so pro-ish. Was yeah, that okay? You sound, like a, you sound like a pro. Well, I did go to college, Ozzy. You know, <laughs> okay. I could read. Yeah. yeah, my mom taught me how to read back in the day. Okay. You know? All right. so, so, Ozzy, I'm going to take you That's back good. to 1973, Lock uh -oh. High School. Uh-oh, yeah. Okay, now, let me get this memory going here. Okay, you and your buddy, Eddie Murray, attended Lock High School, correct? That's right. That's and, right. Hall of Famer, and, 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 Hall of Famer. Right, time. Hall of Famer, Eddie Murray. And the two of you were on the same baseball team together, correct? Baseball and basketball. Okay, Actually, well, we, we okay. starred in basketball as well. Okay, please tell me you won at least one championship. Well, <laughs> we did. Uh, we, we, we did. Um we were pretty talented. We came from an area where it was rich in talent, uh, a lot of base, great athletes. I shouldn't say just baseball players, but good athletes, because back in the day, we did more than just uh, play one sport. We played everything and uh, and stuff. And for Eddie and I, it was basketball and baseball, and we used to run people out the gym. Man, it was really uh, – we had a lot of fun. Now, he'll tell you that the only time that I – got him the ball was when it bounced off my knee that I wouldn't pass the ball, <laughs> you so, know, but uh, don't believe that, man. I uh, I passed the ball and I fed him inside all the time. So you're a point guard. I'm, I'm, I'm oh, thinking. yeah. Oh, yeah. Point guard, forward, center, whatever you need. Well, we, I think we have a photo of you and Eddie in high school on the baseball field. Oh, no, I hope look, it's not the one I'm thinking about. Look, that's the one right there, right? Okay, that's good. You guys are standing. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you about it. You guys are standing side by side, like you're holding hands. Like Look like your prom date. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was probably um, – we were probably two homey-looking guys, if, if that's the picture. Um, I don't know exactly when that was taken, but we were – two skinny little boys from South Central Los Angeles. Now, after high school, you did you receive a scholarship? Does Cal Poly San Luis Obispo to play baseball as well? or No, did I didn't. I, uh, I was a walk-on to Cal Poly and San Luis Obispo. I went to Cal Poly on a partial academic scholarship and had to walk on to the program. So for all you listeners out there who um, think that we're all bonus babies, I certainly was not a bonus baby. I was one of those guys that had to take a different route to the big leagues. Eddie, you know, he got drafted uh, right out of high school and went uh, started his professional career. But for me, I didn't uh, I didn't sign to play professionally until uh, 1977, and that was after I played some semi pro baseball after my uh, my college season in a little town called Clarinda, Iowa. Wow. Um, I got drafted by the Detroit Tigers who had drafted Alan Trammell, Will Whitaker, and Jack Morris. And they had a ticket for me to Lakeland, Florida. They mm -hmm. offered me $8,500. And at the time, I told my mom I would get my education and I, was a, I had finished my junior year. So uh, I asked them for ten grand, and uh, they said they couldn't do it. They didn't have it in the budget. So I rolled the dice and I went back to school in hopes of getting drafted again my senior year which I did by the San Diego Padres. I got drafted in the fourth round. And being the good businessman that I am, Tony, I signed for $5,000 and a bus ticket to Walla Walla, Washington, where I started my professional career. Wow. So so what did you do? What did you do with that $5,000? I bought myself a Burgundy Chrysler LeBaron. That's what and, I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> with a Corinthian leather. And I uh, drove it back home from, uh, from Washington and, uh, that's how my uh, big league career started. Wow. And wow. $1,500 separated you from going to the D Detroit Tigers, actually. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, it was that thing. But, you know, here again, I figured that if they didn't give me at least ten grand, they weren't going to take a, a real good look at me. So uh, it was a gamble. Oh, it was, it was, it was a worth the gamble. I mean, you're in the Hall of Fame. Because before, before we talk about flips and before we talk about home runs and everything else, I want to ask you a question that you – were quoted on you said tony todd is the best celebrity softball player you that you you have ever seen oh yeah oh yeah no doubt yeah he was man this guy was like a vacuum cleaner you know he played baseball the way we 
the way we grew up playing baseball, you know, hard nose and going hard on every play and enjoying it. He did it with a smile on his face too, you know. So um, uh, all of the celebrity games that I've played in, he's been a part of. He's he's been one of the uh, one of the highlights. Well, thank you for that, Ozzy. I just I just hate to lose. I, yeah. I just hate to lose. Uh, I think we have a photo of one of the games that we played in, as well. It's just you know there it is right there. And thank you for signing that uh, photo right there. And uh, that's going to look really nice in my uh, man cave, you know, with go- uh, along with my go glove back there. If you can see, I it. see it. Yeah. yeah where yeah. where where did you uh, where, when did when were you presented the go glove? Uh, Ozzy, well, that's one of well, yours. Well, here's that's one deal. of yours. Well, here, here's the deal, Ozzy. It's not what you know; it's who you know. So, uh, <laughs> I just, you know, I think you have 13 of them. If you want to add one here, or you know, I can put it on the other side. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where do you keep your Ozzy? Ozzy, where do you keep your golden gloves? I mean, is there a room that's dedicated to all your awards? Or no, I, I only have uh, I only have one right now. I think, like a lot of guys, I uh, sold my collection, and I don't know who it who it went to, but they went all together. Oh, but wow. uh, Rawlings made me a, a a gold glove that has every year that I that's great. Uh, that I won a gold glove. Nice. So uh, oh, that's that's, nice. that's what I keep here now. Well, but that, that that's actually yours back there. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> no, oh, oh, okay. No, no, so, I'm teasing. So, so it was you. <laughs> no, no, I'm just now, Ozzie, Ozzie, I wanted to say, um, you know, you you actually you wouldn't know this because you don't know me, but you were the one guy when I was a kid. I, I played shortstop a little bit. I was not that good, but I watched you. And the way you that slick fielding, the flips, mm-hmm. I just couldn't, I couldn't believe it. So I'm thinking back to when you when you started out in 1978. You were a non roster invitee to, to the Padres, and Alvin Dark made you yeah. the starting shortstop. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us about that moment? What What do you think he saw in you? Well, you know, I can remember um, we went to instru- you know they, you go to instructional league for the players that they feel have a chance to make it. They send you to instructional league. So. Uh, and one day I uh, saw Alvin Dark up in the stands. There was no, but no, uh, no fans there, but I could see Alvin standing in the tunnel. And so two or three days later, he came back. And so I had this coach by the name of uh, Glenn Ezell. Glenn Ezell used to call everybody Hoss. And <laughs> I felt that Glenn Ezell was one of those people that just, he just liked to ride people because he certainly rode me, you know, come on Hoss, give me more Hoss, give it to me Hoss. And, I was running every ball out and doing what I was supposed to do. But this guy seemed to be a guy who just, he was just hounding me. And so make a long story short, Glenn Ezell was the one that came to me and said, Hoss, I know you think I've been riding you a lot. He said, but I've been doing it for good reason. You got an invite to big league camp, you know? So um, I say that to say to, to people sometimes that when people see that something special in you, they, you know, they, they, they drive you and they, they push you and because they know that you have what it what it's gonna take to, to make it to the big leagues and evidently Glenn Ezell saw that in me and I can remember when Alvin Dark, who brought me to the big leagues, got fired in spring training. I can remember that what what he said to me, he says, Come on in my office and sit down. I went in that morning and he said, Look, this is baseball and this happens all the time. He says all you have to do is continue to do what you've been doing. Pick the ball up and get it across the diamond because you're going to be a great one. Wow. And this is coming from a guy who made Willie Mays the captain uh, of the Giants. Right. I mean, Alvin Dark, that's some serious baseball name right there. That's right. Alvin uh, was a uh, – he was he was very kind to me. He gave me my opportunity, and uh, I'll always be very thankful for, for that opportunity. And, Ozzy, before we move on, there's, there's something else you're, you've been known for – you're always fresh into today's produce, bro. You, you dress so nice every time I see you. Now, when, when did that start? Did it start in church or uh, elementary? You know, I, well, yeah, it started in church and going to school. You know, my mom always made sure that we were starched. You know, back in the day, we used to starch our jeans and starch and crease oh, your jeans, oh, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. So we had to, uh, we had, we went to school that way. And so I was raised that way, man, to try and be nice and presentable when you go out. Yeah, yeah, you probably have like designer pajamas as well, right? No, 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 <laughs> no designer pajamas. <laughs> Listen, I'm not surprised though, because Ozzy, watching you on the field, you you play like somebody who's nicely dressed. It's so it's so smooth. <laughs> and well, uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. How, so, how did you? Will you tell us about the flips? Where where did this? Okay. When did this start? Let me say this. Yeah, I, I grew up in in Southern California, 
And I lived across the street from a wood factory where they used to build pallets. So there was always plenty of sawdust. So we used to go over and tumble in the sawdust. And then on Thursdays, we went to a place they call Family Fun Centers, where they had in-ground trampolines. And so we used to flip over the concrete from one trampoline to the other. And that's really how we learned how to, that I learned how to tumble. And we used to, we had these, uh, uh, these wire fences that had those spikes on top. It was about four feet tall. We used to dare to, dare to jump over those. Oh. Now, if you missed, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> so you better have you better have pretty good hops. So that was really how I learned to 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 leap and make sure that I I got high enough. Uh, and, and then I played basketball as well. So I had pretty good hops and and stuff. And so I I was self taught as far as tumbling was concerned. And then when I got to the big leagues in 1978, my rookie year, we had to run long distance after we finished working out. And so I was at the back of the pack and being one of the rookies, Dave Winfield, Gene Tennis, uh, Gaylord Perry, all, they all gave the young guy a hard time. So to show them I wasn't tired, I ran and did my round off back flip. Gene Tennis had girls that were involved in gymnastics and he wanted me to show them at some point in time that I could do that. And we weren't able to do it during the season. So the final day of the season, which was Fan Appreciation Day, he and the PR guy thought it would be a good idea for me to do it going out to my position. I reluctantly did it because in San Diego, the entertainment was the chicken. And I didn't want to show the chicken up. <laughs> but I did it, and people liked it so much, they asked me to do it opening day the following year, and lo and behold, a trademark was born. Great. What a great and, story. And, and you were traded from San Diego to St. Louis – for Gary Templeton, another good shortstop. Um, yeah, one of the most talented players to ever I, don a pair of spikes. True five-tool player. Um, had a, He could run like a deer. Had a cannon for an arm. Could hit with power. Hit for average. Still the only guy in the National League to get 100 hits from both sides of the plate. I, I knew that, actually. I, I, I don't know why I knew that stat, but I know stupid things. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but but I, I want to ask you, so you were traded. You went to St. Louis unbelievable you like won a world series that first year you were there you're probably a good luck charm have you been to st louis before how was that whole like getting used to the midwest which you're not that used to like, how, how did you get used to living in st louis and, and acclimating well, to the area well let me say this here you know i i knew that coming to the cardinals was going to give me an opportunity that i probably would not be afforded there in, in san diego at the time because it was a revolving door the thing that uh, that what that delayed the trade was the fact that I was a three-year player who had a no trade clause, oh. and for everybody that had no trade clauses, they got compensated, or they had to give an okay for a trade. Well, they traded me without ever, first of all, telling Whitey Herzog that I had a no trade clause in my contract, and uh, they were not going to compensate me. So that's what took the trade so long. But I knew that coming to St. Louis was going to be the best thing for me if given the opportunity and Whitey Herzog put a deal together that allowed me to come over and um, it's a trade that changed my life. So we just had, we just had the all-star break and, and mm -hmm. uh, the all-star game is one of the ways that I think about you. Cause as a kid, I, I used to love getting to see those other teams and on the, uh, at, at the, at the game this, this year, they honored Hank Aaron, who we mm -hmm. recently lost. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I wonder if you could just talk about your feelings about Hank um, what he meant to the game, what he meant to you? Well, I mean, uh, I'm one of uh, eight or nine players who was also from Alabama, from Mobile. Um, you know, so uh, people ask us, you know, what was it? Was it something in the water? I guess, you know, the guys from Alabama are, are two percent of the Hall of Fame, you know, mm. so it's very, very special to, to be one of those players from uh, Alabama and to have had the opportunity to spend some time with Hank was very, very special because he, like probably for you, was one of the guys that I admired growing up. And to watch what he was able to accomplish, um, you know, and you know, when you talk about those pictures, you know, I can remember seeing the picture of him before he got on the train going to his uh, first big league camp. Uh, he That picture probably looked a lot like that little black and white picture mm -hmm. that you guys had of Eddie and I. So... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it was uh it was great getting a chance to know uh hank uh, you know hank was to me he, he was one of those guys 
one of five or six guys that were in a class of their own. And I'm talking Frank Robinson, Mays, and and stuff. And I had the the um, the pleasure of uh, at the Hall of Fame watching or seeing all three of those guys sitting at the same table. You know, so that was pretty special for me because they were all guys that. I admired when I was growing up and certainly have our guys that had a big part in, in uh, forging the way for a lot of us to have the opportunity to play this great game. And, and talking and, about the all-star game. Um, I mean, you, you played in the all-star game when the national league used to win. They haven't won, <laughs> they haven't won in a while. Yeah, that's you know, right. It's yeah. kind of embarrassing. I don't but, know. What, <laughs> I don't know what happened along the way or when, when, when that went away, I can remember my first all-star okay. game and, Tell there us. was a pregame in those pregame meetings, you know, when Pete Rose would stand up and the president of the league would come in and talk about how important it was to show our dominance against the American League. And uh, I'm sitting there as a young guy, you know, starry eyed, and, <laughs> and here's Mike Schmidt and uh, all the greats uh, around me, you know. And I'm and now I'm I'm part of an All Star game. And I always took the All Star game as being a real honor to, to be in that because you were on stage with the game's best. And, you know, for, for me to see guys who say, well, you know what, I don't, I don't want to play in the all-star game. That, that's just crazy to me. Yeah. I, I was going to talk about how the game has changed in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I always admired about you and actually the Cardinals in general, you, I'm an Indians fan, but the Cardinals were always my favorite NL team. He says that to every mm-hmm. guest, Ozzy. He, he doesn't, Does he? Okay. He says, well, says, I do not know. say that to every guest. If you watch the shows, you'll see. But, um, <laughs> You know, Ozzy, I know you were not known for your power. Um, in fact, right. I, I used to play a video game with my good friend Casey. Casey Scheifel. I hit, I hit a home run with you, and it drove Is him that... crazy because he was not <laughs> expecting that. So I, wa- right. I wondered if you could talk about you hit the biggest home run of your career in the 85 NL championship. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us the story of that. Of that well, well, then here again, you know, 1985 was one of those years for me uh, – that I, I met a guy by the name of Mackie Shillstone. Mackie Shillstone is the trainer who took Michael Spinks from a light heavy to heavyweight. He's worked with uh, recently with Serena Williams as her trainer and Peyton Manning. And uh, he's, he's worked with all of the greats. And, you know, the thing that he and I talked about was trying to make myself a little bit stronger so that I could last 162 games as opposed to 82. And so I, I started working with him with weights and nutrition in 1985. So I had learned to pull the ball. And in this instance, the Dodgers had always tried to get me out with hard stuff in. And so uh, having learned how to pull the ball, um, you know, this was a, another case. If you go back and you look at, there was a couple pitches that he threw me on the inside part of the plate that I had just missed. And uh, sure enough, you know, he tried to come back in there. He got too much of the plate and, uh, I was trying to get the ball down in the corner and get myself in scoring position. He supplied the power. Uh, I supplied the technique, and, and the history was kind of made. I didn't go up there thinking that I'm going to try and hit this ball out of the ballpark. That's, that, that wasn't what I did. But I had learned how to pull the ball and back the defense up uh, in 1985, and I think it was at that moment that people started looking at me as much more than just a defensive player. Up until that point, I was um, I was labeled a, just a defensive player, but – I've always worked extremely hard to try and be as well-rounded a player as I could be. In 1985, that all came together. Now, speaking of weights, Ozzy, do you think today's athletes, do you think they overtrain with the weights? Because, you know, let's, let's be honest with me. Back in your day, you probably never heard of an oblique, right? Be honest. Well, yeah, no. I, when, I, when I was young and growing up, I can remember the first weights that I got. We were so stupid. I went out there with the weights, and I just, I just lifted the weights until my arms, my arms were like this. You know, girls for the girls, my, my, we call it Ozzy. Yeah, girls for yeah, the girls. Just, just, just curled. But uh, it wasn't until 1985. I'd always work with weights and stuff in the off season, mm-hmm. and I always have a good first half, but then things just kind of tail off. That was the reason I hired Mike and Shillstone to try and help me maintain my strength and and, and weight during the course of 162 games and. So 1985, it, it, all of that came together for me. So, um, you know, as far as uh, obliques and all that stuff, yeah, we had injuries, but we didn't know it was called oblique or right. or hamstring. We just put some dirt, we just rub some dirt on it and go out there and 
continue to play. Let you me, know, that, that was just the way we were raised. I, Ozzy, let, let me set up that home run a little better. You you had 26 career home runs lifetime, correct? Am I, 28, 28. 28. There you go. Thanks for correcting. Mm-hmm. And, and left-handed, you were like, you have not hit a home run for like over 3,000 at-bats. Am I correct? I mean, was, yeah, that's not, uh, yeah, that's not what I did. I mean, that wasn't I know, I know. I'm just saying. Day. So when you went up there and hit that home run to beat the Dodgers, which I'm not a Dodger lover, so I'm happy you did that. Trust me. <laughs> I, it was That was an unbelievable moment. Buck called it. It was like a magical moment. You couldn't write that in a movie. And I just want to thank you from myself for giving us such a great <laughs> baseball moment, Ozzy. I mean, it was, it, was, it was a moment in my life I will never forget. And I know you're uh, on the, I don't say that to any of our guests. And I'm telling you right now, I watched that here's, game. I'm a Reds fan. I'm a Cincinnati fan. So you don't like me. Big Red Machine. Big Red Machine. Oh, no, no. Uh, and I've, I've oh. spent a lot of time in Cincinnati. I've been in St. Louis, too. I've been, I've been in the arch. I took the elevator up in the arch. I spent a lot of time there. I love the barbecue in St. Louis. So you don't. So I'm a fan of St. Louis. But what I'm saying to you is thank you for that great moment. It was unbelievable. <laughs> Actually, well, though, thank you. Ozzy, I want to thank you for something else. I want to thank you because I used to watch baseball, and I loved those days when the home run wasn't what you were going for. You, you were not trying to hit a home run in that at bat. No, no. You no. were trying to get on base. And That's you right. were trying to do it in the right way. And I, I think it's a loss that the game isn't played that way as much anymore. I'm just curious your thoughts about that. Uh, I mean, it's uh, the game. That's where the game has really changed. You know, you look at the shortstops in the game today, and they're probably there more for their offense than they are defense. You know, so uh, they're willing to forego defense for the offense that's being created today, which I, I guess is exciting for fans. But for us as baseball purists, you know, we know that with all the analytics, and, and analytics has its place. But I think the game has become so analytical now that you've forgotten how to you, you've forgotten about playing the game. You know, you've got to learn to. I know that as a old time baseball player, that if I get the guy in from third base with less than two down uh, more consistently than the opposition, I'm going to win more. It's about getting that guy in from second base with two out. Uh, if the guy gets on, get him over, get him in. All of that, all of that stuff irregardless of what you're doing now. These, those are still things that have to be done on a daily basis if you're going to win. They're not done. What they I, don't do it. They don't, they, they don't do it at all now. You know, it's just trying to hit the ball out of the ballpark each and every time. And it's just uh, it, it's just one of those things that, uh, as a baseball purist, it drives you crazy. But it's, it's, it's the game that we have now. I mean, I mean, t- Tony Todd and I go to games. We watch it on TV. It, it drives Tony crazy more than me, but they uh-huh. do the shift. No one at third base. So it's first, right. and, no one at third base. And all the guy has to do is do a slap hit or even a bunt to third base. It's a double. And, yeah, and, yeah. and, and they can't bunt. Amazing. They can't nope. move the guy over. They can't do anything. Tony, now, Ross, do that. Do you they think it, do, do you, Ozzy, do you think it's an ego thing? Because I know if I came up the bat and there's no one at third base. I'm squaring around. I'm laying that that bunt down, and I'm getting the first base. Well, I mean, Tony, what is what did we used to say? Hit it where they ain't. Hit it where they ain't. Okay, exactly. hit it where they ain't. So it, now they're talking about getting rid of the shift, and 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 you've got me on a on a tangent here. Mm-hmm. I think that what's happened is that we're allowing people who have never played baseball to make baseball decisions. Thank you. Making mm-hmm. making rules and stuff for the game of baseball. Mm-hmm. You know, why should I? change my defensive um, uh, 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 setup simply because a guy doesn't have the ability to hit the ball the other way. That's not my, that's not my problem. As a professional athlete, you should be able to hit the ball. It was, you know, watching a Tony Gwynn, mm-hmm. Wade Boggs, and people like that. Rod Used Carew. That, Rod Carew. Mm-hmm. Watching those guys, that was, it was, it was magical. Watching those guys use the bat the way that they did. And so what you're saying is that the guys today don't have the ability to hit the ball the other way or make the adjustment to hit the ball the other way. So let's get rid of the shift. That, well, you shouldn't get rid of the shift. The shift is not the problem. The problem is that these guys are not willing to do what it takes to make themselves better. Exactly. Ozzy, do you think that if the 85 Cardinals came in and played these teams, th- wouldn't they small ball them to death? Like it oh, seems yeah. like they well, would. We would. I, I mean, I think that, the the eight teams of the eighties are eighties teams here in St. Louis could have played against any generation. We proved that you didn't have to hit home runs to be able mm-hmm. to win pennants. We, I mean, we did it. So yep. it, it could be played at any point, any time because 
the bottom line is that you got to catch it, you got to throw it, you got to hit, you got to run. And we know that if we do that more consistently than the opposition, we give ourselves a better chance of winning. I mean, Javi, Javi Baez, who's a good shortstop in Chicago, he's on the pace to strike out 200 times this year. 200. Can and it's you okay. And, and, and you, you never struck out. You, didn't, you had like really low strikeout percentages when he played. Like, unbelievable. Right. I mean, right. I mean, what's your take on the guy striking out 200? That means a third of the time he's up, he strikes I'm, out. I mean, that's but, unbelievable. But... But if he hits 20, 25 home runs, that's the game today. You know, they, that's okay. And, and not only that, if you hit 20, 25 home runs back in the day and drove in 100, that was an MVP season. You got these yeah. guys today, they drive in 25 and they, drove, they, they have uh, 50 RBIs at the end of the year. It's just, it's crazy. And as I said earlier, it just drives you nuts to watch that. But uh, it's the game that we have today. Now, you know, Ozzy, none of us played at your level, but, you know, when I was coming up, it was embarrassing to strike. I would never want to strike out, you know, yeah. but, you know, it, it's ex- accepted now. You know, you, you you walk back to the dugout with a smile on your face. Uh, there's that's no right. way. Huh? That's, a, that, that's exactly right. And it doesn't seem to bother the guys that they didn't. And we realized that the only way that you put pressure on a defense is to put the ball in play. And especially if you got two strikes on you. There's no such thing today as a two-strike approach. You know, right. it used to be that there was a two-strike approach. You choke Soak up on the up bat, on the bat. Yep. And, you, and you put the ball in play. But today, you know, these guys are swinging the same way 1-0 and 0 is 0-1 uh, 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 as they are 1-0. and 0. Now, can you name any of the shortstops that are playing today that remind you of yourself, Ozzy, at all? Well, not remind me of myself. But, you know, I was asked this question by George Carl the other day, who was a big baseball mm-hmm. fan, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, who I thought was a, a, one of the best shortstops in baseball. And I, and I told this to him, and I, I tell it to everybody. The one guy who doesn't get all of the, the glamour and he doesn't do it with a lot of flair, but he's the reason that the organization has become a lot more consistent. He is the reason that they've been winning. And uh, that's Brandon Crawford in San Francisco, man. He gives it to you every day. He gives you consistency. Um He's given them a consistency in the middle there that I think that turned their organization around. And when you have a guy back there who, as a pitcher, you know that if you get a ground ball, there's a 99.9% chance that that ball that's going to be turned into an out. It, uh, from a confidence standpoint, it just makes you better. And uh, with Posey behind the plate, um, they, they've done a great job in San Francisco in shoring up the middle of their infield. And, uh that's that's the reason for their winning. And, he, and he's going to have forty home runs this year. I mean, that's another stat. He's on he's on pace. Yeah, he's become a great offensive player as well. You know, so yeah, he's uh, he, he's one of the he's one of the guys that I I, I like watching play. Does he played nineteen seasons with in mm-hmm. Major League Baseball? Right. We've mm-hmm. had we, we've had many players on our show. They always tell us a great prank story. You guys are known for pranks. Baseball players. Love pranks. I don't know why you guys love to do that. <laughs> you have to have a good story. Either somebody played one on you or you played on somebody else or you were part of something. Tell us tell us your favorite prank in the past 19 years you were, that, well, that you were involved the, in. The best, the best one I could never tell. Ah! I couldn't tell on this. The, the I promise I won't I tell anybody. Tell. I promise. <laughs> no, no. Uh, but I tell you, you know, uh, Joaquin Andujar was a teammate. And Joaquin was one tough Dominican or so he always said. But he was definitely afraid of snakes. Ooh. So we used to take a, a, a giant rubber snake and put it in the freezer. And they'd hang our uniforms up, <laughs> you know, before we put them on. And so we would take the snake and I'd put it in his pants or I'd put it in his <laughs> shoes or <laughs> somewhere, somewhere, there, somewhere there in the locker. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, he would not come back to the locker until after everybody was out and he'd have the clubhouse guy go over and make sure that there was no snake in there. But now this is the same guy who also used snake oil on his arm. Wow. So go figure, go figure. Now, I, now, Ozzy, ending the show, I just want to know, is there anything that you can, advice that you can give kids, you know, high school, literally, you know, college growing up to prepare themselves to, you know, to make themselves better, I would say. Well, here, here it is. The, the thing is, uh, Tony, you know that it's, it's repetition. Mm-hmm. No success comes without some blood, sweat, and tears. 
you know, if 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 you don't if you don't put in the the blood, the sweat, and the tears, you're only going to get out of something what you put in. If you don't put anything in, you shouldn't expect anything in return, and that's life. And so, for all those young kids out there, man, it's you shouldn't have to be told by your parents, shouldn't you be out taking ground balls, or shouldn't mm-hmm. you be out working on your craft? And that's how you know whether or not a kid loves what he's doing. It doesn't have to be told that it's time to practice. It's one of those things that becomes a way of life for him. And, um, you know, for all the kids that I that I come in contact with, I, I tell them that, you know, if you're not willing to put in the, the effort and the time, uh, you're never going to get the most out of it. That's great, Ozzy. And you worked you worked in it all. And I will say, the things I remember you for are mo- I, you did lots of great things, stealing bases, getting hits. But it was those plays up the middle where you would dive and flip the ball to the, and turn a double play. That's what I remember, and I miss that. You know, that was a, that's always a very important part, and I think that was one of the things that we did in the 80s as a team. We were very efficient at turning the double play, you know, because that becomes a, the p- pitcher's best friend. My job was to, to cover the mistakes that maybe a pitcher made. And so I took a lot of pride in making sure that uh, I turned the double play with the efficiency and the consistency with which we did in the 80s that gave us uh, uh, it gave us a leg up on on our opposition. Well, Ozzy, this is this has been an honor to, uh, you know, have this time with you. And, and, you know, I'm pretty sure my buddies Ross and Dan, they feel the same way. And and I've always wanted, you know, like I said, I've always looked up to you since I was a kid and. You know, I would see it at every Gold Glove Award and, or one of these celebrity games. But to actually be able to sit down and talk to you, man, this is I can this is, this is it was on my checklist here. So all right, well, uh, good, good. You know, I just want to thank you for always, you know, being a fan of mine as well. And it's just, yeah. you know, it's great. So it's I been great. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks all right, for joining man, us, Ozzy. You're a class act. All right, all yeah. right. You guys have a great day.